Welcome to July Set News. Take a top stories in crypto and yeah, bring them out of bite sized pieces. Today, just like the thumbnail suggests, uh, there's a lot of things going on behind the scenes which people need to be aware of about how great the crypto market is actually doing as opposed to what is being said. So, first up, bullish cryptocurrency exchange prepares to launch and go public on the New York Stock Exchange. And this is gonna be uh, spearheaded by one of the former presidents of the New York Stock, Stock Exchange. And you have to uh, make mention of this, is that this exchange is not just a general run the mill of a exchange like a Coinbase or like a Kraken or something like that. They're gonna be combining the best aspects of DeFi as far as like gaining yield, the exchanges, the liquidity, and bring it all together so big money players can actually get into it. And this is just one story where you really need to pay attention to, because if not, you're gonna get fooled. And we talked about this yesterday, about how these different uh, institutions and entities out there, they wanna make it seem like they're, we're on shaky footing, when in actuality, we're on the precipice of really going mainstream and being big as far as the crypto market. And this is one of the stories that we talk about. So we'll take a look at that. And then also on the fact that uh, I know that uh, the market is very boring right now, but this is when all the money is made. I'll explain that uh, at uh, part of the last parts. And this is when we really should be front running all these different uh, big people like Scott Menard from Guggenheim and JP Morgan, all the ones that are, are spreading FUD and whatnot. And lastly, I just wanna talk real quick about Graham Stephen and his uh, channel being deleted uh, and what's going on and how he can prevent that, which is the same thing that I did to prevent my channel from being deleted. And we'll talk about that last, but first let's take a look what's going on into the market. So today it is the 10th, 11th, geez, 9 a.m. El Paso, Texas time. Look, usually every Sunday there's a big dump, but ever since uh, the Bitcoin miners have uh, gone out of China and all the different Asian markets have been um, shackled, with what's going on and not being able to trade, we don't see too much of a dump on a Sunday. Sometimes it comes on a Monday or Tuesday and it's just like a little bit of a pullback, but Sundays are actually pretty decent and everything's just kind of going uh, a little bit sideways. So market cap is 1.41 trillion. So we may have, you know, got a hundred billion here and there, but who cares? That's not what we're here for. We're here for the 10 trillion market cap, let's just be honest. And uh, the difference, oh, let's take a look if there's anything up today. Right now, Bitcoin price is almost 34,000. Let me blow this up so you can see it. Uh, ba, 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 ba. 24 hour change. We've got Bitcoin 0.53, 1.66 for Ethereum. Anything big. I don't really care about the small stuff. Tether, nobody cares. 2%, 1%. No, not really. So enjoy a Sunday as it trades sideways. Ooh, Terra Luna up. Ah, so what are you going to do? 7% for Cosmos. Interoperability uh, gains favor. All right. So that's what's going on in the market. Again, not a big deal. I know it's boring. And this is when, <laughs> when nobody really cares. But this is when you really need to pay attention. And which leads me to my first point, the bullish exchange on the New York Stock Exchange. So real quick, I'm not gonna go through the whole article. It's pretty self-explanatory, but just some main points. Uh, this bullish exchange was announced its plan to go public on the NYSE Friday through a merger with Far Peak Acquisition Corporation. Far Peak is a SPAC or a special purpose acquisition company. You're gonna hear that word a lot. So just get used to it. Uh, special purpose acquisition company. And they do a lot of a lot of great things to acquire and uh, get things as far as like publicly traded stuff. And this was a quote, bullish plans to launch a revolutionary regulated crypto exchange that offers deep, predictable liquidity for investors to generate yield from their digital assets. What does that mean? I'll get to that in a second. Far Peak CEO Thomas Farley, a former New York Stock Exchange president, will become the CEO of Bullish and Block One CEO Brendan Bloomer, Blummer, I don't know, will be appointed as chairman. And uh, just real quick, remember this old adage, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And uh, Thomas here probably knows a lot of people with a lot of deep pockets. So I think this is a match uh, made in heaven. We'll see how it all works out. But the thing that interests me is just about what he said in this interview. And we're gonna go over two sound clips. One's a minute, one's like 45 seconds. I just want you to listen to what he says and how different it is. And also take a listen as to where he thinks crypto and digital assets are going. This was the most telling for me as to where we are going. Remember, former president of the New York Stock Exchange is talking. Let's take a listen to what this guy actually says because I guarantee you a lot of people are listening to what he's saying. I mean, for your, for your viewers, this is an, an opportunity to invest early in a digital asset market structure business. Uh, I believe it has a lot of rewards. I, I'm going in as CEO of this business full time. Uh, certainly, any business with 
with significant potential worth also has significant risks. And I encourage your viewers to study those as well. But I think this is a big idea as time has come. Look, I've said this before. Digital assets are here to stay. The smartest entertainment. Look, digital assets are here to stay. The smartest people in the space are saying they're here to stay, and we're only gonna, going to grow and build as different problems are solved. That's essentially what he's saying. So when all these different other people are like, ah, it's going to go to nothing, it's going to go to zero, or there's going to be a crash, or, it, it, to me, I'm, if you're looking at the, at, at the small swings day to day, yes, this is very stressful. Yes, there's a you know, big difference in between one day, 20 to 40%. That's not why you why you should be here. And I can't give you investment advice. I'm just, this is just investment opinion. So I should really have said, this is why I'm here. I'm just here to invest and hold on for the long term because I think this is like, uh, you know, just like how we had the internet back in the day, just like how Blockbuster fell the wayside and, uh, and uh, we had Netflix come up. And here we are with uh, a, a huge disruptor uh, in the industry, as far as everything we can probably think of, uh, crypto and digital assets. So I will not interrupt. Let me let this guy speak some more. Engineering talent is going into digital assets. Digital assets are solving very important problems. Anybody who tells you they know exactly how it's going to turn out is lying or delusional. But in general, you're going to see more and more interesting use cases, more and more dollars go into the space. And being able to provide predictable liquidity with a $9 billion balance sheet and teaming up with the, uh, you know, this visionary entrepreneur who I referred to feels like, a, feels like a really great opportunity to me. Brandon, how should viewers view bullish um, in relation to the companies they may be more familiar with, like a Coinbase or Binance, etc. Yeah, so uh, bullish is really focused on passing a lot of the beneficial interest to those that actually provide the underlying liquidity that creates the network effects of exchanges. As Tom mentioned, we're combining kind of the market architecture of DeFi based concepts and bringing that to the high performance central limit order book. So we're kind of kind of bringing together the, the, the third party bids and ask you would normally find on, on traditional centralized exchange, but then augmenting it with that deep liquidity that acts as a portfolio rebalancing function for those that are depositing into them. So right there, can you imagine if you were traditional money and you're trying to get into cryptocurrency, you're like, I don't really know about this stuff and these exchanges and there's hacks and there's different things and I don't really get it. You're like, well, former president of New York Stock Exchange is in here and I'm not talking about yield and uh, getting that and uh, providing liquidity. Well, I do that as, you know, as far as a market maker, maybe I should get into this. It's just that simple. I mean, really, if you think about it, now there's a long way. So there's a long ways to go, but I think this is a, definitely a step in the right direction. I'm excited this is actually happening. So yeah, uh, providing liquidity. It's not like Coinbase or Binance's. Well, Binance does it a little bit. Uh, and then of course, Coinbase says uh, Coinbase earn or whatever they call it. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to gain liquidity and you have a massive amount of money, why don't you just go into crypto? Because it seems like everybody's getting into it anyhow. So this might be the next uh, uh, big pull for FOMO and uh, investors. And then lastly, I want to talk about, this is the last piece that's going we're going to fast forward to 250. And right around here, here and what this is is about I, we talked about this in the channel i know people don't like it but it's true we need regulatory clarity and this is why just take a listen the non-blockchain companies of spot can't simply just list an erc 20 ethereum compliant governance token skip the whole pain of going public um was that ever a thought uh, in your mind brendan that there was a way of of raising money without using the traditional financial markets Absolutely. And it's a great question. Um, as you mentioned, the crypto thesis is all about allowing people to have economic exposure to the projects that they're associated with. And so that was really important to us. And that's why we're going public simultaneous with our launch. When it comes to why did we choose to actually do this on the NYSE as opposed to just issue a token? There's a lot of regulatory uncertainty around the status of some of these tokens, which creates some jurisdictional hurdles and exclusions of certain types of parties uh, and, and a lot of just regulatory uncertainty for the company, but also the investors. So we thought that this was a uh, tried and true avenue that would um, would unlock new types of capital for the business, but give uh, retail investors the most protection and access to uh, holding a piece of our company. Yeah. So, I mean, it really just all comes down to that. Like if there was regulatory clarity, I bet a lot more businesses would really get into it and go, oh, we can do this and this and this because we know exactly where we stand. We have equal footing. Nobody wants to start a new business. And then all of a sudden you get sued. It's like going, OK, I'm going to start a fast food restaurant and uh, we'll call it McDowell's. And, uh, and they're like, McDonald's is like, no, you can't do that. Well, we have the golden arcs, not the golden arches. And you're like, no, you, there, there's regulatory clarity here. I mean, and, and as, as far as like, like trademarks and franchises, you can't do that. And of course that would protect a lot of people. It's just, it's a, 
it's not a great example, but you know what I mean? Like if there is more regulatory clarity about what is a commodity, CFTC, what is a security, uh, the SEC, and what is a currency, Office of the Comptroller of Currency, uh, then maybe you can actually figure it out as far as businesses and get, get things going, get things started. That is just my two cents, which leads me to my next point. I think that this is uh, a step in the right direction. And when we take a look at what's going on, it's a good thing that these are happening. But again, we take a look at what's going on around us. We talked about this yesterday, about how these entities try to fool you because they're trying to bring this price back, I believe, and this is just a guesstimate, about what they could actually get or dip their toes into. Look, I mean, would you want to buy Bitcoin at 64,000? Wouldn't it be great if you just buy it at 10,000? That'd be pretty cool, right? Well, it's hard for me and you to do that, but it's not too hard for like a Scott Menard over there at uh, Guggenheim to say, hey, there's no reason to own Bitcoin. It's kind of it's kind of ridiculous. Also, it's a it's a tulip bubble that he just talked about recently, which is very odd because we talked about this yesterday is that uh, he also said five months ago that he believes cryptocurrency could go as high as 600,000. He's talking about Bitcoin. And he told Bloomberg uh, that it could be right now it's worth 400,000. This was months ago. And then, of course, now this is recently. I don't I believe one of the reasons is because they want to pull that price back and they're not dumb. They're, they're pretty smart money. They've been in this in this game for a while. They can manipulate things. And that's just how it goes. They manipulate markets uh, as far as like uh, precious metals. Speaking of which, uh, JP Morgan comes out and says, hey, this uh, Grayscale Bitcoin unlock, which is going to happen uh, July 19th to the 28th, actually is a little bit before then, but they're like, it's going to drop dramatically. It's going to just really just uh, mess with the market, $10,000 incoming. And I try to do this on the channel every time is that you have to understand with Grayscale, they're selling the shares. They're unlocking the shares of the Bitcoin trust. It's kind of like an ETF, but not really and they're not selling any Bitcoin. So don't fall for that. Don't fall for the FUD of what Scott Menard talks about. Don't fall for that stupid China FUD where all the all the miners are getting out of there. Thank God they're getting out of there. Come to Texas, we got a great state. And, uh, and you take a look at the other things, that's why I think things are going pretty well. And then this leads me to my next point. The market's boring. So we just saw that everything's kind of choppy and moving sideways. That's what Look, the institutions, that's what they want. They want just to move sideways and not go parabolic so everybody can get in and, and raise the price. They don't want that. They want it to go down. They either want it to go sideways or preferably down. And this, my friends, is really where all the money is made. And I've said this before, and it falls on deaf ears because uh, as the, the market slows down, so does my channel and so do people listening to crypto people like myself they're like this is sucks this is so boring and i'm trying to i'm trying to shake people like this is when it's made you don't make a bunch of money when you know in, in the height of the bull run when uh, it's all maxed out your all-time high that's where you get screwed and you, and you actually buy at the top and you fomo in and bleh, it just all goes down the hill so really in all honesty uh we got to front run we have to front run these guys all these institutions this is when the money is made moving sideways this was in 2016, 2017, 19, and 20. Uh, I didn't get to invest in 2016 because I wasn't, I didn't really realize what was going on, but I invested towards the top, like everybody knows in this channel. But as things move sideways, I made a ton of money, a ton of money, just dollar cost averaging when everything dropped down to the ground. I wasn't a great investor, but I learned one thing, and that is never buy at the top. And usually the ones that make the most amount of money are the ones that just dollar cost average, value cost average, or just get into the middle. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, just go to this website. Dan, the thing that spins them on my head all the time, Dan Teaches Crypto, it's 100% free. I made it 100% free. I made it so anybody can get into it and understand exactly what crypto and digital assets are and how to be a little bit more smarter of, a, of an investor. This is only investment opinion, not investment advice. And uh, I hope people will actually listen to me this time and, uh, that's when money is made. So it's either when it's choppy or it's kind of going up a little bit, but that's the best time. So let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Hopefully you're here and dollar cost averaging like I am, but uh, that's up to you. And then lastly, I just want to just really quickly, and uh, I don't really, I don't really watch this guy, but apparently like millions of people do. <laughs> so good for him. So there was this, this video by Andre I can't say his last name, but he's got a lot of subscribers too. Anyhow, and he just talked about how uh, Graham here is going to lose his channel because of all the different, uh, let me see if I can find it. And you probably have seen these comments. All the different spam comments. Ugh, not like this. That looked like this or something like this. 
and you'll see it in the in the comment section like hey you want to talk and whatever else so if you notice in my channel we don't see that we don't see that i mean you'll see it like for like maybe 30 seconds and it gets wiped away and a lot of people don't get it even on my old videos uh, you don't see it too much and uh this was a huge problem for me three months ago or so and uh, I had actually asked people to what their resolution was. Nobody had an idea, but then I was reached out by a company, actually a couple of guys, and they said, hey, we can, we can fix this for you because that's what we do. That's what we're, we're gonna start it up and see if we can do it. And it, it eliminated all the, all the comments or most of the comments. And it's called YouTube Guard, ytguard.com is linked in the description. Obviously this isn't for you, but what it does make sense uh, is this. So I reached out to all the YouTubers that I knew as far as like crypto influencers and ones that I didn't know. And I reached out to them and go, look, here is this program. I've used it for a month now. And in the beginning, it wiped out 70% of spam comments. And then in the end, it wiped out like 90 plus percent, 95 plus percent. And it's good to spare your, um, your subscribers from getting screwed over and scammed and everything else because uh, beforehand, people would actually DM me and go, hey, I thought it was you and I sent them some Ethereum and it didn't really work out. <sighs> Those are scammers. And I can say this every single time on, on the video, but it gets repetitive and boring. And then people are like, well, I didn't see that last part because I didn't say the end. And then of course I got screwed over and, and it's just a big long thing. So look, when you're, when you're looking at your different YouTubers, um, the ones that didn't do this, they either didn't know about the program or just don't give a crap about you getting screwed over. That's really what it comes down to. Yes, this Y2 guard is expensive. Yes, it's a little bit cumbersome to, to get going, uh, but these guys uh, help set it up. And uh, that's a bummer, but it is what it is. So I'm gonna do a, a video over on Dan Clips uh, about this, this whole thing. Uh, but uh, if you know of any YouTubers, uh, send them to YT guard dot com and uh i don't get any money from from these guys i'm not uh, being a paid spokesman they give me a, a discount for my monthly rate if somebody uh, mentions dan but they don't give me any money uh, but i use them all the time and that's why the comment section is a lot cleaner than than a lot of other places out there so look that's it that's all i want to talk about and uh if you like the video first of all thanks for for going all the way into my rants i appreciate it if you like the video give it a uh, thumbs up and a like also consider subscribing a lot of things we talk about are very time sensitive on this channel over on dan clips is uh more of uh the advancements in crypto and projects and different crazy stuff like this and more live streams so we'll do that's over there but that is it for today thanks so much for watching i appreciate it see you on the next one